Well, if you feel like you've got whiplash from wild market swings, perhaps investing in real estate is more your speed. Greg Rand, radio host and CEO of real estate website Own America's Bank, and we know it's about location. You've got two locations for us today that you like, but one of them's in Florida. In Florida, yeah. Well, you know, Florida. If we could look Not at a Florida. chart for because it's Florida is one of the Sorry, worst Greg. hit places. Well, that's it. Exactly. So it's, the it's bubble's right been the erased. That's yep. the idea. The bubble's been erased in Florida, almost across the state. They're back to 2001 prices. So if we have a chart here for Jacksonville, mm -hmm. that's our choice right now. Okay, we like looking at these second-tier cities that have opportunity for dramatic population growth. So ask yourself, what does the Panama Canal have to do with real estate investing? Couldn't right? possibly answer that well, question. Well, they're widening it right now. 100 years from the original digging of the Panama Canal, they're widening it to allow for these mega tankers that actually carry five times the cargo, all right? They come around the tip of uh, Panama Canal, they come into the East Coast, and Jacksonville has invested $600 million in the last few years to deepen the port, to expand the port, and their job growth because of that. Mm. And their projected population growth is to anywhere from 50% to 100% increase in population in the next 10 years. That's all housing demand. So today in Jacksonville, you're looking at prices that are down. You can buy a house there, a single family house for 125 grand, rent it out for a 10 or 12% return just on the rent, and then ride the market up as the population swells. One thing real quick here about Jacksonville is one of those cities that's really spread out. So how do you look at inventory and things like that when you're looking to invest in real estate and you go, to, go into a city like that that maybe you're not too overly familiar with, understanding that, man, it could be a really big geographical area. Uh, that it's a good question, actually. There's a lot of, um, a lot of research tools these days that you never had available, um, availability of in the past. And so uh, our company actually assembles a network of national professionals who can actually help you from a distance, mm -hmm. get to know these markets. But basically, you can look at stats. You do one drive around. You can get a feel for the place. But at the end of the day, Anything outside of the downtown metro, single-family homes, you get a feel for the neighborhood pretty quickly. The other city you see investment opportunity in is Colorado Springs, right. uh, which me, my, my kind of broader question to you, too, address Colorado Springs, but what is it about sort of these, like, secondary, tertiary cities, if you mm -hmm. will, that seem to be so hot for new business expansion and infrastructure spending, and what can they do to really to further that? Well, I think in a lot of cases it's lifestyle. Okay, in the case of Colorado Springs, an hour south of, D of Denver, all right? You land in Denver, you look around, you say, where are the mountains, right? They're in the distance. You go an hour south, you're at the base of the foothills. And so there's a lifestyle benefit to a lot of these second-tier cities where they're a little bit smaller, a little bit quieter, all right? And in improvements in the job base, mm -hmm. companies moving there, industries moving there, have an impact on the overall aggregate population that can be really dramatic. And so in the case of Colorado Springs, they have a lot of military. They have NORAD, right? They track all the, everything that's in the air. That's built into the mountain there. They can't close that military base because it's infrastructural. It's, it's you know, unique. Um, but what it comes down to ultimately in places like that is lifestyle. Ask the folks that go there and never leave. It's simple things. Fresh air, hiking, outdoor living, that kind of stuff draws and keeps population. You know, infrastructure, easy access to the yeah. airports and whatnot. Uh, and real quick, in 30 seconds, give me your take, because I know we have you on about every month, the real estate market in general right now. Improved, worse than it was about a month ago, about the same? You know what? There's some good numbers that came out just recently compared to last year. And what's good about that is that we're past now the roller coaster ride of the tax credit from last year. Okay. Ultimately, nothing happens month to month that's significant. What we're doing now is we're finding a bottom. We're going to hang there till we have an overall economic revival, all right, which is could, probably going to be years away. But there's a mood in the industry among the buyers that, okay, the worst is over at this point. And so I'm not sure they're right because foreclosures are still going to pull, pull some prices down a little bit. But the attitude seems to be, I think, kind of a neutral, to tell you the truth. Gotcha. Thanks, Greg. Good seeing you. Good stuff. I Thanks. thought you didn't have any fun.